Hey ladies and gentlemen, I'm with Mr. Shui Hark, Hong Kong film director and producer, and welcome back to New York. How long has it been since you came to New York? Uh, 30 years, more than. Yeah, so long. When was uh, here the last why time? Why so long? <laughs> uh, you know, this time things, I never really know how time, you know, pass. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just like, jiffy that it's 30 years. Uh, and I, I, I can find out why is that I didn't actually got back to uh, New York, mm -hmm. the place where I stopped you know, as a filmmaker. Really? Yes. And you can talk a bit more about that? How did you get your story? I, 30 years ago, I was in New York mm -hmm. working as a documentary assistant mm. in production. Mm -hmm. uh, and I always, always, I always imagined that I should one day make a movie. Mm -hmm. uh, then I did a documentary with uh, Chris Choi, uh -huh. uh, Chris Choi, a director. And then after that, I left New York City and got back to Hong Kong mm -hmm. and started my career in television. Mm -hmm. And you know, and then suddenly thirty years. <laughs> so I, I, I can't really explain why I didn't come back to New York City, mm -hmm. but it's it is quite meaningful now. I got back to the city, New York. 30 years, year, 30 years after, and um, being recognized as a filmmaker in the same time, uh, given the whole lifetime achievement, which is for me is like it's quite dreamlike. Mm -hmm. It's like if just you have a dream and then suddenly you come to reality that the dream is true. It's mm -hmm. not a dream anymore. I think so. Um, where did you study film in New York? Did you study film in New York or in Hong Kong? I started film in Texas. Really? Yes. Okay. I came to New York because I um, actually I was looking for a job mm -hmm. in New York City. Then I ended up working for you know a New York film documentary production house. Wow. And then uh, I also worked as a reporter in the Daily News in Chinatown. Wow. So I I was having I was working in two jobs mm -hmm. at the same time, just for the reason of. Uh, knowing New York City better That's good. from uh, documentary and also from being a reporter of daily news. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's all about you know, how I involved in the things in New York City. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would also ask you, now if you come back to New York 30 years later, and being an immigrant myself, when I first came to this country, I started telling people about Kung Fu movies or Wuxia movies, they look at me with a blank look on their face. What's that? And now everyone in you know in America, they are so into watching anything that has martial arts, um, flying movements, and you know acrobatic um, stunts. It's not only in just incorporating Asian movies that you see stuff being done in the Matrix, uh, even the latest uh, for kids, Kung Fu Panda. I would say, would you say you would? Uh, you attributed that, the infl uh, part of the, of the Asian influence of American cinema in a way? Uh, I see, I think film, this film culture is sort of everything com combined, mixed together. Mm -hmm. um, you see, movie is the culture from the West first. Mm -hmm. You know, the 24 frames per second on the uh, screen showing something very similar to reality, but it's, it's not. It is like a movie. It is something, images, shadows, mm -hmm. colors on the screen to, to tell you a story. It's very flat. Not, nothing really, you know, it's all suggestion, so kind of impression, experience you, you maybe you accumulate for years in your, you know, your life, and then you go to the theater in the dark. You see something very close mm -hmm. to your, um, you know, your living experience. Mm -hmm. um, we grew up as a child, you know, film freak. You know, mm -hmm. the reason why we make a movie because we were actually we we, we are crazy. We are fan of movies, mm -hmm. and then you know this excitement and this passion. We have already have a long time coming together, and we become working for. You know, film as our career, 
I want to pick up technique we learn kind of film experience from everywhere in the world. We learn, we learn film from local movie mm -hmm. uh, in Asia. Also, we learn film from you know the West, uh, Indian film, mm -hmm. uh, American film, European film. Mm -hmm. Films that you know basically we find connection uh, between us and and the movie. Then we start making movie. Mm -hmm. We start making film, you know, so that we tourism for our interests, mm -hmm. for our, you know, whatever you call revelation from mm. somewhere, from a God or something. But this this one thing that we, we are born with this passion to do, mm -hmm. without any real logical reason, factor. Mm -hmm. The second thing also we find is acid, that is pleasure, to, to, to take this as a career mm -hmm. for uh, survival in the, uh, this very practical society. Right? Mm -hmm. So this sort of thing all together, we share experience of our life, uh, share experience of our viewpoint, evaluation of uh, human, you know, civilization or the culture or entertainment. We see that it's important to our life as it's sort of a balance of the boredom we 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 we, 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 we get from you know a daily life mm -hmm. routine mm -hmm. that we need entertainment all together, and then we make movies. And suddenly one day you realize that. The, the stuff, the movie, the work you have done, get the chance to distribute it to other areas mm -hmm. and get reaction from the people that, from the places if you never expect they would get reaction from, uh, then I feel like it's, that it's, that it's, it's become something more real to us than mm -hmm. before because mm -hmm. you find people. It's not a shadow anymore. It's not like something hidden in the dark that you know you don't know what their reaction is. Mm -hmm. They are reaction directly to your movie, mm -hmm. and I feel very, very honored, very happy because then it's not one one way. It's a reaction. Way communication. Yeah, we're learning from you know people before we're learning from where we appeared from mm -hmm. the director to make movie for us. Now we're making movie to show it to the you know the public, which the movie can become, have more market and more audience, that is something we feel is really, really rewarding uh, you know, result from what we have done. So I cannot really say that, you know, who is doing what, but I feel that we are into the global culture, mm -hmm. we are into the global civilization that we share things together. Mm -hmm. And you're known for your Wuxia epic films. How did you get into uh, Wuxia? Okay. <laughs> That's something that not many people know in the U.S. It's not a, uh, okay, Wuxia, we're, we're learning Wuxia actually because we read a lot of novel mm -hmm. of that kind of material mm -hmm. when we were a kid. You see, when, when I was young, when I was a kid, uh, the, the entertainment we got is to, after reading the novel, and we discuss it in the school mm. with the classmate, and we always played, you know, the character in the story, mm -hmm. and sometimes we actually we, we we do some dramatic, uh, you know, like a like a broadcast radio, you know, radio broadcast. Oh, radio dramas. Mm -hmm. Radio drama among us, mm -hmm. among these classmates, just for fun. Mm -hmm. right? But then because that moment in our in our childhood, you know, the movie, um, the movie at that moment was not not very up to our you know our imagination because usually we have a lot of imagination and normal but when we look at the screen the screen didn't provide us the kind of you know visual uh -huh. to satisfy us about you know the imagination and normal so we build up that kind of vacuum in our in our sort of like a life in mm -hmm. our in our you know our, our life that's why after a while, when they feel like, well, I feel like, why well, should be a filmmaker who can create that visual on the screen? Mm. You know, like you know, what I dreamed when I was a kid. So that sort of thing. This is a wuxia culture I learned, you know, throughout these years. Mm -hmm. And also watch movies who done by great directors like Zhang Che or, mm -hmm. you know, Hu Jing Fu Da, King Wu, those people, those people who given us a lot of inspiration mm -hmm. about what to do in the future. But then, I didn't imagine I was the Wuxia director. I only can imagine I can be one of the directors doing not especially in Wuxia. In 1976, I, I 
I got back to Hong Kong from New York City mm -hmm. and applied a job in television. Mm -hmm. I started a career in television director. Mm -hmm. After six months of uh, mm, directing a, a soap opera, soap drama mm -hmm. series in uh, for TVB. Oh yeah, TVB. And then at the, at the end of six months, I was assigned to be a director of Wuxia series. Hmm. The reason because probably is because they want to do arrange some arrangement for some new director. And I think not too many people may not many people uh, prefer Wuxia Zhang because it, it would take you know more time, harder work and at the same time Wuxia Zhang was not something sophisticated. At that moment Wu Xia Zhuang is very, you know, more blue color mm -hmm. uh, kind of culture. Mm -hmm. and, and most of the people, most of the people are very sophisticated and more intellectual. They would do more modern material. So I was assigned to be a Wu Xia director. Uh -huh. And then since then I became Wu Xia director <laughs> from that point onward. I, I, for me it's sort of I, I, it's a wonderful mistake. But it's <laughs> okay, it's a but, wonderful mistake, but um, there's a second part question. Did you ever get tired of it at one point? Uh, well, you would get tired <laughs> from anything. It's <laughs> like after a, a long run of something happened that you always feel like I need something, some time to, to break or maybe mm -hmm. a vacation or a rest, what you're doing. But this is very normal for uh, everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, I, it happened all the time. You feel like you're working on something very dramatic or very tragic. Mm -hmm. You want to do something have more fun mm -hmm. than what you're doing now. You, especially Wu Xia Zhang. You have killed so many people. Yeah. In fighting, you knock down so many bad guys. The body count you know, stacks up, you know. Yeah, and also the heroes get wounded all the time. <laughs> you want to have some fun doing some other genre. This mm -hmm. is very normal. It happened to me quite a lot of times. Mm -hmm. uh, but then, you see, the Wuxia culture in our tradition has, has a very long history mm -hmm. of so many years, like more than 1500, uh, but more than 1500 years, mm -hmm. you know, in history. The first uh, Wuxia novel come from Tang Dynasty, that's the seventh century. Mm -hmm. And in that, this long tradition, we have a lot, a lot of uh, mm -hmm. interesting things. Mm -hmm elements, stories, characters, and the detail of what we call Wuxia culture in this long history of uh, Wuxia culture. Uh, I believe we have so much to work on, and what we're doing now is just like, a, you know, maybe put it this way, it's only a, a tip of iceberg. Right. So, I don't know, I, I believe that there's so much to work on, and I, I, feel hopeful. I hope that you know, if the rest of my life, I don't have enough time to work on those, the rest of the area, then I wish that, you know, there are more people who can have this um, possibility of work doing what I want to do. Okay, and I would also ask you this. What is your reaction to the American enthusiasm towards your movies? Can you give me like that, uh, a particular incident? Do you want to talk about when you found out that uh, the American reaction to your movies? I think I think Wuxia is a very unique Chinese uh, expression of romanticism mm -hmm. and uh, the connection to uh, the nature. At the same time, uh, philosophy philosophy applied to uh, the establish you know, like the uh, lifestyle of the present time. Mm -hmm. I remember, uh, in my impression, Wuxia is a way out to the imagination world. Mm -hmm. It's like, actually, it's like cowboy culture in the West. Because mm -hmm. we always imagine somebody riding in the sunset or maybe coming from a very barren desert, having a gun, shooting the bad guy, helping the, you know, the good people, family to, to live on uh, a pioneer, you know, period of time 
uh, when you see that good people are very helpless, you need very good governor to <laughs> yeah. shoot down the bad people. Wuxia is something like this. Yep. Wuxia is something that is not you see normally in a in a present uh, lifestyle, but you can imagine yourself in that certain fixed imaginative uh, world. Good people get you know good uh, deserve good ending, good result of from life because we have heroes. Mm -hmm. You know, and these heroes. And we need heroes. And in this world, we do need heroes because we can see a lot of. Uh, injustice in your time, in our time. We, we need a lot of things like spiritual hero who can help us get through this difficult time. So I, I believe, other than the romanticism, I think also in the world, we, we already have some kind of you know, uh, longing for people who have the righteous attitude. Mm -hmm. And Wuxia had the hero who have, had a very strong ability. And visually, it's a fun to watch. Oh yeah, they're very acrobatic at the same time. They do very unpredictable action. Uh, you see, doing Russia movie is also designing yes. something new every time to generate the energy on the screen. So, I we we share the experience. We appreciate appreciate a lot of you know uh, action element, heroic element, dramatic element from the Western films. Mm -hmm. At the same time. I trust that you know this element ferment in our culture and become something uh, of the East mm -hmm. and travel back to the West. Yeah. And then in nowadays, because so everything is one global, you know, um, mixture of everything. I believe I believe we share things together. We're mm -hmm. quite fit, sim mm -hmm. similar. And one reciprocates from the yeah, other right, right, to right, the other. Right. So and being talking about design wise. I believe you have something brand new that's uh, being shown this time around in New York? Oh, the, uh, the Detective D. Yes, tell me about that. Um, did it, something, uh, Detective D is, uh, when I, after I did Chinese Book Story in the 80s, mm -hmm. and I was told about Detective D, this character, mm -hmm. uh, somebody told me that, that I have to look into this historical figures uh, because he was famous working with Empress Wu. He was a very, very successful prime minister in the Tang dynasty, 7th mm -hmm. century. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was good because he's been very famous being a judge in the judicial department in the 7th century. Mm -hmm. I, f I feel like you know this can be a very interesting story because mm -hmm. Empress Wu was a very controversial character in the history of China. Mm -hmm. If working with Empress, Empress Wu as a very successful prime minister, that means this character is very strong. Mm -hmm. So I start looking into Judge D. Actually, is, 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 he, 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 he was never a detective. In history, he was a, just a judge. Uh -huh. So, but since he working in the judicial department, He's very efficient in mm -hmm. handling like cases like ten thousand cases a year, mm -hmm. which is like crazy. So it me and end up like the novelist would imagine he's a very good detective. Oh, he's yeah. more more like a detective than a judge. So so then I start working on his story, mm -hmm. starting from two thousand. Two thousand. Wow, that's a long time in the making. Yeah, about ten years ago, maybe mm. eleven years ago. Wow. And, and at the same time, during my, um, my, my script writing process, I also knew that Chen Guo Fu also was writing another story of Dian Jie. Really? So that's why we have fun of exchanging our opinion about the, the way we look at Dian Jie. And, and, and he was very interested in what I'm doing, and I, I was also very interested in what he was doing. So we sort of share the thing together. So about five years ago, he gave me his script of mm -hmm. Dear and Jie. I said, mm -hmm. if I'm, I'll be interested in doing it. I said, okay, definitely yes. <laughs> <laughs> because I say, if we're doing different Dear and Jie, uh, to me, I think it's less interesting than if you combine Dear and Jie together to do one uh -huh. good one. Mm -hmm. So 
I just said, okay, let's do it. Mm -hmm. And then I read the script, and then we worked together, collaborate on a new Phantom Flam, the first episode. Oh, of really? Mm -hmm. So, I would say, since your movies deal with a lot of uh, historical context in Chinese history, and the and I also come from an interest in an educational background. I would say within the past 10 years, there is a huge interest in Asian culture. Um, well, it started from anime and manga for American kids, but now they're also moving on to, there's a big love for Korean soap operas and Chinese historical epics. I would say, you know, I'm just, just coming from me, I would say that, you know, they should start showing your movies in the Asian history classes because it provides a good history context of the time period and just let Americans understand and have an idea because uh, Americans have no idea what it was like in certain periods of time in history except reading from a textbook where you have a visual uh, representation. So my other question to you is, um, other than Lucia, is there anything that you haven't done yet but you would like to do? Definitely. Yeah, I want to work on documentary. Oh. Because, you see, I was a documentary filmmaker mm -hmm. when I was in New York City. Mm -hmm. And when I got back to Hong Kong and, and China now, mm -hmm. uh, Beijing, or, uh, you know, mainland China, we call it that way, mm -hmm. um, I always want to do some documentary on real people, real topic, real happening. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like documentary is different from drama. Because Absolutely. Mm -hmm. you see, when you watch a drama, when you something touch you, you always step back and say, oh, this is only a movie, this is not real, no, this is what we mm. Different DNG, uh, to me, I think it's less interesting than if you combine DNG together to do one uh -huh. good one. Mm -hmm. So I just say, okay, let's do it. Mm -hmm. And then I read the script and then we worked together, collaborate on a new Phantom Flame, the first episode oh, of really? DNG. Mm -hmm. So I would say, since your movies deal with a lot of uh, historical context in Chinese history, and the and I also come from an interest in an educational background, I would say within the past ten years there is a huge interest in Asian culture. Um, well, it started from anime and manga for American kids, but now they're also moving on to. There's a big love for Korean soap operas and Chinese historical epics. I would say, you know, I'm just, just coming from me, I would say that, you know, they should start showing your movies in the Asian history classes because it provides a good history context of the time period and just let Americans understand and have an idea because uh, Americans have no idea what it was like in certain periods of time in history except reading from a textbook where you have a visual uh, representation. So my other question to you is, um, other than Lucia, is there anything that you haven't done yet, but you would like to do? Definitely. Yeah, I want to work on documentary. Oh. Because, you see, I was a documentary filmmaker mm -hmm. when I was in New York City. Mm -hmm. And when I got back to Hong Kong and, and China now, mm -hmm. uh, Beijing, or, uh, you know, mainland China, we call it that way, mm -hmm. um, I always want to do some documentary on real people, real topic, real happening. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like Documentary is different from drama because you see, when you watch a drama, when you something touch you, you always step back and say, "Oh, this is only a movie. This is not real. No, this is what we create on the stage. We create the stay the situation on the screen." But then, documentary it is different. Very different. When you look at documentary, it's real, and sometimes it's very shocking. And flinching. Yeah, flinching because like. Because sometimes if you show you a good documentary, or it always can bring along something very important and very significant that connect to the people. And sometimes that message sometimes is shocking. Okay. Is there any subject matter that interests you for a documentary? Definitely. That's one subject I always want to do for years. That's Asian American history. Uh huh. In what sense? Uh, I think we. We, Asian Americans do deserve a record of the history of the people who migrate to America mm -hmm. in the early stage, and also the people now, how they live, connect to you know all this 
uh, generation of generation. Mm -hmm. I, I do think we, we need something like this mm -hmm. to remain in history. It's like a it's all like a photo album mm -hmm. of our present culture in the world. Mm -hmm. And Asian American do deserve to have something like this. Yes, we do. And on that note, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.